Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. Today is May 1st, and I'll tell you what, we've got an action packed show for you today. Let's go through our top stories. U.S. produces the energy everyone is looking for 900 megawatts at the largest plant in the world. Pretty exciting story here. Let's go to the geopolitics uh, and inflation. A threatened to derail the booming stock market. Are you invested in the stock market? Biden aims to bridge the decarbonization divide with $7 billion solar initiative. Don't trust the numbers. Let's go to OPEX. Um, oil production falls in April. Uh, I I wouldn't want to manage OPEC. Uh, I'll tell you what, they've got their work cut out for them. Let's go around the corner here to global upstream M&A market poised for a $150 billion injection. People are wanting to invest in oil and gas, and uh, it shows. Let's go to Norway as another way just to say, hey, shout out for the North Sea. Uh, the, the Barrage uh, oil and gas field with new Besla uh, offshore tie-in, they are going to be extending some of their uh, work there in the North Sea, which the UK with the UK interconnects, as well as natural gas plants all in the EU uh, are really excited about getting some extra life there. So let's get started. Um U.S. producers uh, produces the energy everyone is looking for. This is a 900 megawatt geothermal power plant. This is pretty cool. Um, geothermal, you know, the potential technology. I'm seeing a lot of people talking about geopower has almost 27 times expansion by uh, 2050, reaching approximately 100 million megawatts. Uh, according to the DOE. Um, GEA, a geothermal energy association uh, in the form of moderate expansion, but anticipates broader scale of 21,000 megawatts of geothermal capacity by 2050. The exciting thing about geothermal is geothermal can take advantage of the EMP uh, oil field service and everything else to try to help get that technology so that we can use some of the abandoned wells so we can use uh, take advantage of the ESG and get rid of orphan wells and turn them into uh, geothermal uh, energy. This one the newest uh, geo is undergoing 900 megawatts in the LA uh, area of the Imperial Valley in California. The only time I'm really, really proud of California, they're doing something like this. This is pretty darn cool. So geothermal, I am a huge fan. And I want to give a shout out to Doug Sandridge today. I'm wearing his shirt that he gave me. I signed the oil and gas executives for nuclear. I am a huge nuclear fan. And uh, we have got to have uh, the low impact uh, environment and long, low cost uh, energy to all consumers uh, let's let's just roll out the nuclear bandwagon. Geopolitical politics and the inflation threatened to derail booming stocks. Let's just have a little bit of fun here. Uh, the S&P is looking at having its best quarterly performance in 2019. I want to take a moment right now and ask a question of our listeners. Send a note to questions at energynewsbeat.com. And I, I really want to know, do you think that the stock market is being falsely manipulated by computer AIs to uh, sell down and or uh, short stocks? Or do you think that this is actually market generation by fundamentals? It's been years since I had my MBA and my financial formulas nothing makes sense anymore. So when you sit back and take a look, are there new fundamentals? Is AI involved? Is it being falsely manipulated? Uh, Want to know. 
Other factors is GDP growth pointing to the upside remain fertile grounds. I want to disagree with this article from the standpoint that the U.S. is at one point, I believe, 9% growth, which is absolutely even less than a Russia and, and the others. So um, precious metals is being bought uh, by China, like you wouldn't believe, in the advent of getting ready for bricks with Russia. The dollar index for the month of April showed almost bullish uh, with the price over 106.25. And oil has an inverse relationship with the U.S. dollar, but it held uh, pretty tough because of the geopolitical situation. So uh, it is going to be very interesting. The article goes on in to say that uh, government data could si signal a new direction. My problem with government data is they've been manipulating the data. So uh, I got just questions. I, I, I would love to know people's feedback on this. Let us know your thoughts. Let's go to the Biden administration aims to bridge the decarbonization divide with a $7 billion solar initiative. I'll tell you what, don't trust the numbers in this article. I thought the article was very good. This is from even, believe it or not, our buddies over there at uh, Oil Price. The $7 billion endow endowment uh, will most certainly move the climate finance needle in the right direction for solar. Here's the problem. The new solar for all program means that 900,000 households will have solar on the rooftop for the first time. Millions of families will save uh, $400,000 per year on their electricity bills. This has been a false number from day one because of the way that the grid operators, California has had some serious problem with rooftop solar trying to get money back because in the middle of the day, Solar is then turning energy negative when the grid operators can then use it. And how do you finance or fund back to the consumers? This is a nightmare. And they this is false numbers that the Biden administration is putting out in this grant. It is absolutely despicable management of fiscally horrific responsibility. We're, I'm going to start using that. Fiscal horrific responsibility. You got to love that one. Let's go over here to oil. OPEX oil production falls in April. This one's pretty significant. According to the survey, which uh, results were released uh, yesterday, which is Tuesday, uh, OPEX uh, crude oil production fell to 26.49 million barrels per day. That's 114,000 barrel per day drop from the levels OPEC produced in March. Um, in March, Iraq, Nigeria, Venezuela, the UAE, and Libya all saw production decreases, which they were kind of excited about. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran saw the largest production increases. Saudi Arabia needed to get some money uh, increasing and everything else. You heard me talk about the dark fleet for a long time, and this really impacts OPEC plus members more so, but it does impact uh, the OPEC members. There are increased ships being assigned into the uh, dark fleet. Dark fleet gets around sanctions. Unbelievable. Let's go ahead and get to the uh, next story. Global upstream M&A market poised for $150 billion dollar injection in 2024. Global upstream, this is from uh, our boys over there at Reistat. The Permian is dominated in uh, uh, near future with 41 billion of non-Permian opportunities on the market. This includes Balkan-focused Grayson Mills Energy, Unite, uh, Unite, Unita-focused uh, XLC Resources, Exxon's Balkan portfolio, EQT's non-operating uh, Marcellus portfolio, and certain Haynesville assets from Shell and BP. Uh, this is amazing. The M&A is not over with. I think it should uh, really 
uh, keep going and a shout out to uh, Atoll Ravenna at uh, Vice President of Upstream Research at Reistat. Let's also go over to the uh, Norway story for just a brief moment. Uh, it's kind of exciting to see that Norway to extend mature barrage oil and gas field in the North Sea with new uh, best uh, onshore tie-in. Uh, Norway will add a new uh, offshore oil and gas development in the North Sea, extending the life of a nearby field that has been in operation for over three decades. Um, I'll tell you, this is exciting from the standpoint of uh, Michael and I had talked about for a very long time on trying to get uh, discussions about Norway shutting down natural gas. And now Norway is the uh, Cinderella at the ball, and uh, they're pretty excited to be keeping the North Sea open. So when you take a look at the interrelations of the European market, natural gas, electricity, I'm glad to see some positive uh, things happening uh, there in the North Sea. Shout out for that. Subscribe, like, and again, uh, reach out to me. I am so pleased with all of the feedback that I'm getting from around the world, discussions that I get to have with energy uh, leaders. And we want to know and share the world on how to share the, the story on how to end energy poverty for everyone in the world while having the least amount of impact on the environment, being fiscally responsible, uh, let's do great for the economy, let's do great for um, the environment, let's do great for people's pocketbooks, and do it in an organized fashion. With that, have a great day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.